The first chapter of this book deals with communication. So let's start this chapter by identifying the major objectives of this chapter. The objectives of this chapter include the following. Number one, to demonstrate a basic understanding of the concept of communication. That includes its definition. I mean the communication definition. Number two, to identify the different types of communication. So these are the, object or the objectives of this chapter. But before we proceed with the, the content of this chapter, we should take a look at some of the keywords related uh, to this chapter. These words include communication, verbal communication, nonverbal communication, movement, mismatch, gesture, and contraction. So let's begin with the definition of communication. Communication is defined as the process of exchanging ideas. Exchanging here means sending and receiving. Receiving what? Receiving ideas, thoughts, feelings, and emotions. How? In what ways? Through, spe through speech, signals, or behavior. So in order to achieve this process successfully, we have, we have to have three major elements. These elements are sender, message, and receiver. Okay, let's start with the first part of this process, the sender. How would you define the sender? The sender is the person who sends the information, who sends the thoughts, okay? And these thoughts, these, are the, these thoughts, ideas, or information take a form of a message, of the message, okay? This message goes to the receiver, who is defined as the person who receives, the, who receives these information. So, but the question here is, how can we convey these ideas, these information, these uh, thoughts? So let's, this leads us to talk about the types of communication. The, the communication is divided into two major types. Number one, verbal communication, which is defined as the form of communication in which message is transmitted verbally. So in this way, or in this part, in this type, we use our spoken words. We use our mouth to convey our ideas. Number two, nonverbal communication, which means sending or receiving of wordless messages, such as gestures, body language, or facial expressions. So here we call gestures, body language, or facial expressions as uh, strategies or techniques of the nonverbal communication. Okay, so now your turn to listen to the first audio track, which talks about communication. After you listen, you are required to do or to answer the following questions. Good morning and welcome to the show. Today's topic should be interesting to anyone who has ever had to deal with a screaming and frustrated toddler. Most children start to speak somewhere around the age of two, but they often want to communicate well before that. So some parents are trying a new way to help their small children communicate earlier using sign language. I'm watching a baby sign language class at Parents Corner in Lower Manhattan, and I'm talking to Joan Lee, who's the director of the program. Joan, good morning. Good morning. So these babies are learning sign language? Well, we don't, um, we're not exactly teaching the babies. We're teaching the parents some basic signs that they can use with their babies. What kind of signs are you teaching them? Well, we start with signs for the most important things in babies' lives. Signs for things like uh, more, milk, up, that, that kind of thing. The things babies need to say. <laughs> yes, exactly. Where did the signs come from? Did you make them up? Oh, no. Most of the signs are taken from ASL, American Sign Language. How old are the babies? The youngest is four months, and the oldest is about 18 months. That's incredible. Now, what are the advantages of doing this? Well, mainly, uh, it's much easier for the parents, and actually for the babies, too, if they can communicate. You can figure out what they want. Uh, it's very frustrating when your, your child is screaming his head off, and, and you don't know what, he's, what he wants. I see. Where did this idea come from? From watching deaf children. 
Some years ago, researchers noticed that deaf children learn to use hand signals earlier, much earlier than hearing children learn to speak. So they wondered if all children could use hand signals before using words. And it seems that they can. Now, that raises another question, though. How do children move into speaking from this? I mean, isn't there a danger that they get so good at sign language that they don't speak? No. Actually, the opposite seems to be true. Uh, signing, um, using hand signals, may actually help children develop language earlier. That's interesting. There's also some evidence that it raises children's intelligence. There was one test done where babies that signed scored 12 points higher on an IQ test than babies that didn't. That's fascinating. If you would like to find out some more information about using sign language with babies, log on to our website at... Okay. So let's now do some questions, okay? I'm going to do uh, only two questions with you and leave the rest to you to do, to do by yourself. So listen to the radio report. It's going to be a radio report. You are going to listen to it. And then you have to choose the correct answer to the questions. Number one. What is the main reason that parents are learning to use sign language? Here we are talking about the main objective, the main reason, sorry, the main reason that parents are learning to use sign language. A, they want to communicate with deaf people. B, they want to help their babies to communicate. C, they want their babies to speak earlier. Actually, we can consider all of these three statements as reasons, but we are talking about the main reason. So what do you think the main reason? What do you think the correct answer? Okay, as mentioned by the audio track, the correct answer is B. They want to help their babies to communicate. Okay, let's move to the second question. The interview is taking place. So here we are talking about the place of the interview. A, was it at a radio station? B, at a sign language class? C, on a street corner? Okay, as mentioned by the audio track, the place of this interview was at a sign language class. So you can know that the place was a sign language class because of the screaming of babies. So it took place in the sign language class. So you are required to do the rest of the questions by yourself. Thank you very much.